I said what I said according to Iyanla. All right. So you guys know Iyanla just got finished doing an interview with Essence, right? So it was a big statement she made back in 2013 where she stated that black women need to close their legs. So Essence just got finished doing an interview with her and she said, you know what? I stand firm in what I said. I said what I said, okay? So let's play the interview she just got finished doing with Essence. And then we're gonna play the interview where she talks about DMX. And I really hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Make sure you guys like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Gossip Girl, XOXO. And check this out. I a moment. We talked about black women and boundaries. And, and you said we were out of order. <laughs> we're still out of order. <laughs> um, I think now because we get paid to be out of order now. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, some of the images that we allow to be portrayed of us, some of the ways that we behave and treat each other publicly. Yeah. Uh, and we've made a lot of progress. I, I, I want to look at the sweet spots also. I mean, we've got a woman of color in the White House. Yeah. We've got women of color in Congress everywhere. I think on the personal level, down on the ground, we still need to do some work. And I don't blame us. Mm -hmm. I just say that the way we've been conditioned and programmed and educated um, doesn't afford us the ability to really tap into and live fully who we are. And then we engage in bad behavior, just yeah. bad behavior. <laughs> now, what you said at the, at the time, I think you said something about Boo Boo with no paycheck, dealing with him crying and running by. You know, uh, and, and, you know, this is hard. It's hard because it's, um, I love us. Uh, and so, I want to fully step into my role as an elder and be able to say things that you may not like, but you will at least respect. And I, the way we are moving in the world, it's time for us to close our legs. Close your legs, open your heart. And let's get clear before we keep making the same mistakes over and over and over. Because the men are, they're, 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 you know, they're trying to get themselves together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are so far ahead of them, but we don't really occupy that space. And so we keep getting in these transient relationships, bringing children in when we're unprepared, they're unprepared. Mm -hmm. The number of children in foster care, the number of children in um, just difficult situations. And I know what it's like to start out and think everything's going to go well. Yeah. And then a year, two years in, you're like, okay, what happened? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we've got to be a little more prepared on the front end. So we don't have such difficulty on the black, on the black end, on the mm -hmm. black back end. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, you know, I say that because I love us and I love children. And I just want us, I just want us to do better and be better. All right, comment, comment below. Let us know what do you guys think about this? You know, she said some heavy things. Please comment. We have to know what your intake. All right, so let's go on to the interview where she talks about DMX. I believe this is before DMX passed on. I'm sure this is probably hours before DMX passed on when they did this interview. Uh, so check this out. Um, I know this is a super horrible time um, for DMX, the rapper DMX. Um, as a New York native myself, he's been an icon in my in my life musically and, and my cousins and my parents and so on and so forth. Um, when everything is so negatively surrounding him, I just want to speak to you about the light you saw in him. And I know it will help a lot of people who are constantly sending up prayers and, 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 and hoping and wishing. Well, you what just, are they praying for? What know, are they praying for? Okay. Then, you know, I, and I don't see this as a dark, horrible time for him. Okay. I see him at the point of choice. Okay. He is anointed. I always knew that. He is anointed. However, he was rewarded to be dysfunctional. 
Mm. He was rewarded. People around him loved him, but they didn't love him enough to say, if you don't stop that, I'm I'm, I'm out. Nobody loved him enough to say that. And I think the thing that I remember about him is the softness. He had a gentleness and a softness Mm. that you didn't see on the stage, grabbing crotch, cussing, and you didn't see that. He loved his grandmother. He loved his grandmother. And one of the questions that I asked him was, why wasn't her love enough to sustain you? Mm. This is a young man who was given away. This Mm. is a young man who was a a man who was never consecrated. Mm. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Roots when Kunta Kinte lifted Kizzy up above his head and said, behold, the only thing greater than yourself. Nobody ever lifted him and made that connection between him and his creator. He knew it was there, but he wasn't rewarded to honor it. Mm. He was rewarded for dysfunction. Mm. So I think he's at a point of choice. I think the thing that we can do is send him light and energy. You know, he has to make the choice. And if he comes back, if he recovers, Mm -hmm. uh, how is it going to look different? He's 50, Mm -hmm. which is a critical age for a man, for anybody. 50 is the year of grace. So we're asking for grace for him. But if he's going to come back and people are going to continue to reward him to be dysfunctional, if women are going to continue to have children, with a man who's so lost within himself, you know, he may make the choice to just transition into another way of being. And we can still love him and grow from him and honor his anointing.